Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, the show where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. On the show with me today is Tina Leong. Tina, thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me. So Tina, I'm excited to have you on the show. Um, what team are you on? Well, I joined Firebase as part of Cloud Functions, and then I transitioned onto a new team who we're working on a product that hasn't been released yet. Oh, OK, OK. So this is kind of a, a secret hush-hush thing <laughs> right now. <laughs> sort of hush-hush, yeah. Some people might know about it. If you know, you know. If you don't, you'll, okay. you'll find out soon. OK, well, I'm, I'm going to guess everyone who's watching this right now does not know. But can you give us kind of a hint? Like, what, what, what kind of problems are you trying to solve here? Because Firebase has a lot of things uh, yeah. under its umbrella. So what else is, what's missing that, that could be worked on? Firebase has a lot of products that solve a lot of use cases. And what we've seen is that a lot of, some of these use cases are very common. So a lot of developers have the same uses for our products, and they like to use them in conjunction with each other. So our product is trying to bring those use cases to the developers in a more accessible way. So some way that's easy for them to implement without actually having to do it from scratch every single time for every okay. developer who needs to use that. OK, OK. So it sounds like, so Firebase is already pretty easy to use. But what you're saying is we're trying to make it even easier for some common use cases. Yes. OK, so yeah. I'm excited to see how much time that saves people. It sounds like something that could be uh, very helpful. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, how did you end up landing into the Cloud Functions team? I'm curious to know, because everyone has a little bit of a different story. So my story begins with the Engineering Residency Program. It's a one-year program that Google offers for people who just got out of college. There's eight weeks of training. And during the eight weeks of training, you essentially learn what you would learn in two days through nuclear orientation, but it's spread out over eight weeks. So you get to go much more into depth for each topic that uh, you cover in nuclear orientation. So nuclear orientation, what is that for people who don't know at home? So nuclear orientation is the orientation that every new Googler uh, goes Nuglers, through. Nuclear is new Googler. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we cover all of those topics, but in eight weeks instead of two days. And we have people who are experts in those fields come in and give us talks. We also go through a lot of things that like the nuclear orientation doesn't go through, such as how to reach out to your managers if you're having issues, or how to find resources that you need in Google. So just a lot of things about like how to navigate Google, because okay. Google is such a big company, and it there's is. so many things that you have yeah. to learn. They tried to condense that into like eight weeks just by like throwing all of that information at you. Is that something you have to apply for? Like how do you how do you, how do you get into that program? There is an application process. I did not go through the application process. I was actually flagged through my interviews as so as a candidate who would be a good fit for the engineering residency. So program. interviews, you interviewed at Google. Yeah. And then someone said, oh, you would be a good fit for engineering residency. So I, I've heard of people going in through both ways. Okay. I don't know what they're like doing these days, but it seems to be getting really really popular. So. I'm very happy for it. So one last thing that I can say about the engineering residency program that I really enjoy is just the mentorship that you get as part of the program. So when you start your rotations, the four and a half month rotations, you're matched with a mentor and a second mentor on the team. And they essentially help you scope and complete your project over the four and a half months. Actually, interestingly enough, the project that I did with Cloud Functions became, it became like the first proof of concept for the for the thing that I'm working on now. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. So it all ties together. You it all does, there. yeah. Like I, I started out here, and then I like came back to here. Outside of work, uh, what do you do? What are, what are your hobbies? Currently, I am also a lifeguard at the Chinatown YMCA. I like it because I feel like you're learning, or I get to keep up to date with a lot of skills that I think are very important. And Such that as I otherwise... swimming. Swimming, <laughs> and yes. And what else is there? <laughs> so you get CPR certified. So CPR and just basic first aid, so knowing how to recognize signs and symptoms of very common illnesses that okay. some people can encounter. So the idea is to learn what those look like, and then that would help you protect people who might have problems in a, in a pool environment. Yeah, I mean, being a lifeguard, normally you're not saving people all the time, or I would hope you're not yeah, saving people. Yeah, it's not people. like Baywatch, right? <laughs> yeah, so the more common scenarios that you will encounter are just like people who have swam too hard, and maybe they're like short of breath, so maybe they have asthma, or just like, Maybe they fell and scraped themselves, stuff like that. I see. It's also a great place to work on soft skills. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. 
So it's not just blowing a whistle and telling people to stop running at the pool. There's more to it than that. It, that, that works for uh, kids, generally. Okay. <laughs> Adults are a little tricky. Okay, yeah. So what kind of things do you run into at the pool? Like, where do you? how do you have to work with people, so to speak? Oh, man. Some swimmers are very particular about their exercise. And so I've had situations where some swimmers will just call me over and be like, hey, this guy in my lane is like swimming too slow. And it's just like, how do you deal with that? Because it's not really my place to be like, I don't think you belong in the fast lane. Mm -hmm. You should move over to the other lane. But at the other side, you've got this like patron who very clearly wants the guy to move over to a slower lane. So I see, like, I see. So yeah. keeping some order at the pool and making sure everyone is sort of yeah, satisfied. Being with a mediator, I guess. Mm -hmm. So what what else are you interested in? What are you doing these days? So I am actually part of a program called YCOR. Uh, it is a program for young professionals in the Bay Area who want to make or want to feel like they're making social impact. So maybe you've been interested in volunteering or working with nonprofits or you strongly believe in a cause such as like fixing homelessness in the Bay Area or like literacy for all, okay. stuff like that. So social programs? Yeah, social impact programs. And so they gather a bunch of young professionals. We bring the skills that we're using in our day-to-day -day careers to these nonprofits be, um, who otherwise probably wouldn't be able to have access to these sorts of skills. Okay. I feel like I'm also learning a lot of skills too. Like part of being in this program is like learning how to fundraise for your organization. So that's oh, been like an fundraising. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> fundraising that's, a, that's a special is, skill, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not very well versed in it. So it's been, it's been a ride, but it's been fun. And it's like learning about nonprofits is, has been very interesting. Sounds like you're working on some interesting stuff and I hope we'll get to see an announcement about that at the Firebase Summit coming up pretty soon. I hope so too. Okay, yeah, no promises, right? But, uh, <laughs> no promises, but But there will be some new wishes. stuff to see. So. Well, thanks for being on the show, Tina. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to get more video content, more Meet Firebase, Ask Firebase, and other video tutorials. And I'll see you here next time.